Y'all want to see something cool? <laughs> Welcome to Camaraderie, where the grass is green and the cameras are pretty. This video is sponsored by my appetite for the camera that I'm talking about today, which is the Minolta Maxim 7000. Introducing the amazing Minolta Maxim, the world's easiest SLR, because it alone has built-in automatic focusing. Look, Maxim's autofocus lets you get perfect shots before others can even focus. Change lenses, Maxim again gets the shots that used to get away. Only the human eye focuses faster. Minolta Maxim. Only from the mind of Minolta. Way back when I first started collecting cameras, uh, like 2015-ish, somewhere around there, I thought I had found this camera in a Goodwill, but no, it was just the case and the manual is it's very disappointing. Every day after, I just wasn't able to get this camera out of my mind. It was so just frustratingly beyond reach. I started to lose hope as I dwindled into nothingness and time became material and material became time. Every day, as long as a week, every hour, as long as a lifetime. Wait, no, I actually just kind of forgot about it for a few years. I found one in uh, another Goodwill a couple of years later. And uh, yeah, then I forgot about it again until I was out with Selena and we were shooting and uh, she had a film camera that was this one. Well, not this one, but like the same model. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I forgot about it again uh, until uh, a few weeks ago when I was like, oh yeah, I should shoot with this camera and like, you know, talk about it. So that's what I'm doing. Minolta started making cameras about a hundred years ago. And after 6,999 attempts, they finally got it right. The Maxim 7000 released alongside the 5000 and the 9000 in the mid 1980s was the first SLR that had a legitimate autofocus system. Side note, some people consider the Nikon F3AF the first with autofocus and yeah, it kind of was, but like that autofocus system was built into the lenses and I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is the first camera with like in body autofocus rather than like relying on the lens. So before I nut and bolt about this camera's nuts and bolts, I want to talk about the Maxim logo. The earliest produced of these cameras had their X's crossed like this, and they promptly got sued by Exxon because Exxon's a bunch of buttholes. So if you happen to be in possession of one of the cameras with a logo like this, you just know you are one of the very, very few. So cameras, right? You know, they got, they, they, they take pictures and they have controls that let you uh, do all of the things. And normally I wouldn't spend much time at all talking about the control scheme and what does what, cause like, you know, I've talked about this before. There's a video up there, I think, but things are a little bit different with this one. Um, just, you know, just not, it's not your normal, not your normal little button layout. You don't have an aperture ring. Instead, you use these two buttons above the lens release. To adjust shutter speed, you have these two buttons, which is kind of reminiscent of my Pentax Amy Super that I love so much. These two buttons are also used for adjusting basically everything else just in combination with the appropriate other button held down. For instance, do you want to change between aperture priority and shutter priority? Hold down mode, press these buttons, and look at the LCD screen. Oh yeah, uh, my LCD screen is wrecked somehow. It wasn't the last time that I took it out of storage and didn't shoot with it, but it still works. Anyways, this camera does have DX reading capabilities, but if you have a cassette, uh, like with me, whenever I roll my own, they don't have a DX code on it. Or if you just want to like push or pull whatever film you're shooting, then you can also adjust the ISO by holding down ISO and then hitting the shutter speed buttons. There's a couple other modes and settings that you can play around with, but I generally don't use 
those things, so I'm not going to talk about it. But there is a an, an archived manual online for the Maxim 7000 uh, that is available. I'll put that link in the description. And I've also got a couple other resources that I used in my research for this video down there. So, you know, if you're just curious, there you go. I don't know what to do with my hands, man. I just realized I'm like... <laughs> But inside of the viewfinder, you've got all your standard info, your f-stop, your shutter speed, your exposure and focus indicators, and a little rectangle that you can use for your center weighted focusing if you desire. The original kit lens was a 35 to 70 millimeter f4, you know, pretty, pretty bog standard. But by the time I got my hands on this bad boy, it had a honking old 70 to 210 millimeter barrel of a lens, which is uh, quite telephoto. So let's go feel super conspicuous and awkward and make everybody think that I'm spying on them. First up, we have the Canal Walk, one of my favorite spots to walk around in Richmond. You may have noticed some of these pictures look kind of dodgy. Well, not not like dodgy dodgy, because like dodging is a thing that you can do in photography, but they just look kind of funky. I was pushing some Arista 400 two stops to 1600 for the first couple rolls I shot with the Minolta Maxim 7000 uh, with admittedly mixed results. I feel really conspicuous. Just waiting on somebody to come by this spot. Two hours later. Well, I've been here for five minutes, so time to move on. I'll get you one day. All the lines. All the lines. I couldn't find a solid answer online about pushing this stock to 1600 with Ilfusol 3, which is my go to developer. for a perfect segue to the next section. I only had half a roll to work with in the last segment because uh, that was the last of the bulk Arista that I had and I didn't mark the cassette to remind myself that it was a half roll so I went out the next day to shoot a full roll of Arista at 1600 and then I got ran out. Well, Huh. Weather looks a little bit more favorable today, so let's go finish up this roll and run through some Kent Mir. Yeah, where's the, where's the, there's the camera. Even though some of these look grainier than a box of rice spilled on a beach, I still like how a lot of these turned out and I love the telephoto action that this lens gives me. going on I need to make sure I change the ISO but um, yeah I think I'm gonna hang on to this lens for a little bit longer than once I get in the city try not to be such a creep and uh, go with like a 50 Most of these turned out a lot better, in my opinion. But I mean, then again, Kentmir 400 at box speed is basically my bread and butter, so I don't really know what I expected. I mean, to be fair, I don't expect that much of myself, so... 
a much less conspicuous profile. I think this will be a good spot to start with some 50. It was around here that I switched back to the 7210 because I've had in my head some of these shots for months and I haven't had a telephoto till recently. Well, I, I guess I did, but uh, I forgot that I had this camera until recently and the lens was attached to it, so. Speaking of telephoto shots I've had in my head for months, I can't wait to get one of an osprey with a fish in its talons with the skyline behind it, all zoomed in and compressed space and everything because it's a telephoto shot. I don't know, I, I think that would just be a really fun shot, contrasting nature and civilization and I don't know, I don't know, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I've seen it with my eyes, just not a camera, yet. I'm gonna do one of those super cool podcaster dude moves and adjust this. <laughs> yeah, way better. So much better. So let's go over the good, the bad, and the hmm about shooting with the 7000. First off, the good. You know, starting off on a positive note. First thing, there's a nice, clean, bright viewfinder that makes focusing a cinch if you choose to go the manual route. If you do go the manual route, there are some focus assist LEDs in the bottom left corner that tell you if the center point is focused too far or too close, which is pretty handy. It's also pretty light without feeling flimsy. Well, pretty light if you don't have a howitzer of a lens attached. But even then, it never really weighed me down while I was hauling this thing around town. Um, unlike my F2, maybe I'm just used to shooting with my F2 and that thing, yeah, it's a beast. Also, the autofocus is pretty good for being 40 years old. Uh, if, if a bit ghosty here and there, you know, it's searching for the thing to focus on. When it works, if it works at all. And that's, that's where we get into the bad. Oh, that's why they do it, because it does feel kind of strange sometimes. I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is better? I don't know, man. I feel like just a mustache. Can't see my mouth. So, for the bad. My autofocus just kind of stopped working, like halfway through the second or third roll that I was shooting. I did a little reading, and apparently the Batter, that can be a sign that the batteries are like dying, but I just put some fresh batteries in, which I'll get to the batteries here in a second. Don't you worry. I put some fresh batteries in today and 
it uh, still wasn't focusing. So I don't know if, I thought maybe it was because it was so hot outside when I was shooting. I don't think that's the case. Maybe I just have a weird, but maybe it just like after 40 years almost, it just finally gave up the ghost. Uh, I gave up the ghost because the ghosting with the focus. <laughs> God, whoo, that's a good one. I don't know if that's a common thing with these cameras. Like after a while, they just stop. But regardless, it was pretty disappointing um, because, well, I mean, you know, that's one of the big draws of it. I was like, oh, it's the auto-focusing film SLR. How cool is that? The Minolta 7000 becomes an extension of your vision with its fast and precise autofocus system. But also, it just made it weird because, like, you got to, like, reach all the way up here to focus. I don't know. It's like normally I'm just like, oh, yeah, no, blah, 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 blah. you know, oh, oh, zoom, focus, zoom, focus. No, you got to go all the way out here for doing a manual focus on a telephoto lens like this. Obviously, with like a 50 mil, you know, it's not going to be a problem. Luckily, it was bright enough that day that most of the time I could just like set the aperture to f16 or f22 and just like set it and forget it now the next thing is kind of a personal nitpick but with the auto loading mechanism you end up losing like three or four shots at the beginning of each roll and if you're shooting like a store-bought regular old you know Kodak whatever Ilford whatever they they like build that into their exposure count so you do still end up getting 36 exposures but with my bulk loaded Kent Mirror 400 I'm losing like yeah three to four at the beginning of every roll because it just goes it just like takes it all the way up like to make sure that you're not messing up your first exposure or whatever. But yeah, I ended up getting like 32 to 34 shots per roll rather than like the 37 to 39, even 40 sometimes that I get. Not the worst thing, but just something to keep in mind. Now obviously with the auto loading, the auto focus, the auto film advance, the auto metering, the you know, everything, all the auto this and auto that. I, why I oughta. You need batteries. There is no way to get this camera to work without batteries. Now I know that seems pretty commonplace now with all of our cameras, you know, they need batteries in order to work, but back then it wasn't quite so commonplace. For instance, with my F2, it has, you can put a battery in it, but that just powers the light meter on the prism that I have attached to it. And it doesn't need the battery otherwise. You have the full range of f-stops, you have all of your shutter speeds available, um, you can focus, you know, do all the camera things. You don't need batteries to operate that camera. And there are other cameras like the Pentax ME Super that pretty much need batteries to work, but not really because it just defaults to uh, shooting at a 125th of a second and you still have full control of your aperture because the aperture ring is on the lens and not like controlled electronically by the body. Obviously you don't have a meter, but like, you know, you can still shoot with an ME Super without batteries. But this, no, nah, no, nah, gotta have batteries. So like if your four triple A's just die on you while you're out shooting and you don't have a backup, well, you're pretty much out of luck. And as I just found out a few minutes ago, when I was trying to show switching modes um, on the LCD, if you don't set your camera to lock after you're finished shooting, those batteries are gonna get drier than a stoner with cotton mouth in the middle of the Mojave. Speaking from experience, that's pretty dry. And that brings me to the, hmm, about this camera. So the battery compartment, strange as it looks, gives the 7000 some pretty solid ergonomics. I'm a big fan of the grip that it affords you, which is something that it has over the F2, 
the Emmy Super and like basically every other film SLR that I've shot with. But as great as the grip is, the hmm kind of comes into play with the rest of the ergonomics. Namely, how the aperture and the shutter speed controls are laid out. Luke, I thought you said you liked the shutter speed buttons instead of a dial. I mean, you said as much in the Pentax Emmy Super video. You keep mentioning that camera a lot. Hmm. Yeah, you know, it's fine. I guess the shutter speed buttons. I, I don't know. I, just, I prefer them on the Emmy Super because like they're actually laid out you know, top and bottom rather than left and right, which is something I could get used to if I wanted to, but I don't really want to. I don't have the time and like I'm just going to go right back to shooting my F2. So the way that the exposure assist works in the viewfinder, it just like doesn't click with my brain. Again, I could probably get used to it, but what I can't get used to is where the buttons actually are. They're just like in this weird, unnatural position to me. So like if I'm shooting like this, like, I don't know, like one, I wish it was a ring, but like two, it like, I don't know, like if I'm, even if I'm holding it like this, like, I don't know, I kind of have to like crane my thumb over the lens release. I don't know, it just feels weird to me. Like, wait, it's it should either be like up here or like down here. Like take these, take these two, take the focus switch and the lens release and like put them over here and put these over here. Like just, that would make so much more sense to just be like da 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 da. Aperture, 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 aperture. But instead it's like aperture, aperture, aperture. It's gross. That pretty much does it for the Maxim 7000. A lot of the bad and the hmm stuff is more or less like personal nitpicks. Uh, not all of it. I still hate the how the aperture control works. This isn't a bad camera by any stretch of the imagination. And if you're looking to get into film photography, you could do a lot worse than this camera. The Maxim 7000 gives you the option to shoot with like point and shoot mechanics if you just kind of want to dip your toes in, dip your little toes these in. It also has the flexibility to go either partially or fully manual, which I think makes it a great learning tool. And as of the time of recording, don't say it too loud, but these are pretty cheap as far as film, fully capable film cameras go. Like I just did some searching and like there's plenty of these things out there with a lens included that are working for less than 50 bucks which i think is just a breath of fresh air in this hyper inflated film price world that we live in like i said before if you are interested in learning more or if you just inherited one of these cameras from an estranged uncle there are links to uh, a few different resources that I used in my research for this video um, down in the description. You know, it goes over like how to get to aperture priority mode, how to get to shutter speed priority mode, how to, I mean, it's a camera manual, you know, it tells you how to use it. Let me know in the comments if you also feel super conspicuous and awkward whenever you're out shooting with a telephoto lens. I'll be on this side of the lens in the next video. So until then, see ya.